Welcome back. In this video I'm going to share with you how I drew my almond blossom in pencil crayon using toned paper and uh, with a pencil and an eraser and um, I have a reference uh, image here that I got off the internet and that's what the, that's the actual blossom we're going to be drawing today. The first sketch I did I actually did on white paper and I can show you that here um, and that's why I decided to do the second one for this video now on the toned paper. So the coloured pencils that I'll be using in this video are the Faber-Castell Polychromos. I was fortunate to be gifted this by one of my viewers. Thank you, Julia. She actually sent it to me. It's got the 60 uh, pencil crayons in of the Faber-Castell Polychromos. So I'll be using those. Not all of them, of course, tempting as it may be, but we'll be selecting a few colours to work on for our almond blossom. But thank you, Julia. Of course, you can use any of the coloured crayons that you have available to do this artwork. So now I've selected several of the colours. I've got uh, three greens there. I have uh, three pinks, what I'm going to be using. I've got two shades of yellow and quite a few shades of grey, but they're the ones we're going to use. So when I start off, I actually didn't use the pencil to draw the outline. I'm now using the white crayon to lay out the actual petals on the page because we're using the toned paper and I just find it easier with that to, to describe these um, uh, main features of the petals just with a white pencil and we'll work on those uh, later on as well and build them up whereas if you do it with actual drawing with, with a pencil which I would have done if I was using white paper uh, you then really have to um, erase them out afterwards as well so I just find this is an easy way to work with white petals on or any actual image original outlines when you're using toned paper so interestingly enough, the almond is actually not a true nut tree, would you believe, but it's called a droop, and a droop is like the stone or a pit in fruits like apricots and peaches, and it just so happens that we refer to it as an almond nut, but uh, technically it's actually a droop. And its Latin botanical name is Prunus dulcima, or is that Prunus dulcima? I'm not exactly sure. I'm coming along now with the white, and I'm laying down some... Uh, parts of white where the actual white is on the petal. Although we know the petal's really white, because of the shading on it, there are many areas that are actually light grey and even a darker grey on these petals if you look at the um, reference drawing. So I'm putting in the bits that are super white, snow white, call it what you will, almond petal white, where the sun is catching them, where the light is actually catching these petals. The almond tree is pollinated by honeybees and it is originally grown in the Middle East, um, in those areas, um, but it's now propagated on all continents on the globe and in the warm climate surrounding the equator. So now I'm continuing on, I'm putting more pressure on to lay down more white, and all my strokes are in line with the petals, so I'm not going back and forth crossing. They come from the center of the flower to the tip of the, the petal, and that's how the strokes go on my pencil uh, crayon drawing. So I was looking into a little bit more about the almond tree and the almond blossoms when I was doing the research and it turns out that um, the Greeks called the almond after the amygdala which is a part of the brain which is almond shaped. In, the, in your brain you've got two almond shaped amygdala um, and they are part of the limbic system. This is also known as the reptile brain and it's associated with our basic survival reactions like thirst, hunger, the urge to procreate and alertness to danger. Interesting, amygdala. And it's funny because some other nuts like walnuts and pecans, they do really look like brains, but anyway, this is the almond. Now I'm coming in with a, 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 lighter, a lighter shade of gray here. It's one of my lighter grays, it's a cool gray, and I'm just putting in some more shade on the white petals. Um, this is where the Although the petals are white, as I said before, we've got the shade. So you always want to look out for where is the light falling on the petals. They're not all just straightforward, solid white. And um, I do think that's why it's a good idea to practice, practice doing your colouring in with a white petal flower, because it clearly was a challenge if you've got red or yellow. It's so much easier to see exactly where the colours are. So I start off quite lightly with the, with the, next, with the next shade, and then I start to build up and put more pressure on. The idea is going to be that we're going to colour in the whole area that actually is the almond blossom at the end, but you want to build it up slowly, and you always start with the light colours, the whites, the creams, the light greys, 
and then whatever with whatever your drawing is you want to start with the lighter colors then build up the deeper layers on top of that you're not really just going to draw it once and put just lay down the straight up colors you're going to build up colors and we will come back to these petals in a moment now i'm coming along here with this is um i've got two shades of yellow coming here for these um little sticky out bits in the middle i think i'm not sure if they're anthers or stamens i don't know much about plants but that i'm laying those down first and i'm not picking up every single one i'm just giving an indication that we have this this yellow um, sticky out bits going on in the plant then i'm using um, a light pink there to start on those inner petals where the petal actually, where the petals actually join to the center of the plant there's quite a deep pink there and it quickly fades to a lighter pink and flowers do this to attract the honeybee straight into where the, the, the pollen is so that they can get uh, pollinate the plants. So I, I'm using three shades of pink and they're all in the more of, a, I would call them a, a cerise color. And I chose these three colors before I started because they're all in the same range. Starting, as, as I say, with the lighter one first, then laying on the darker one, and then finally right in the very middle, the very, very dark um, almost magenta color that's part of this this flower and it's interesting the almond blossom itself has meanings and the, its main meaning is that it's a new beginning the almond blossom is the very first tree to flower and open its petals every spring so it heralds the beginning of spring and it's a, a season of prosperity and the whole the whole world's happy to see these petals coming open. Other symbolic meanings for the almond blossom are watchfulness and the awakener because the whole world is awakening in the spring. Now I'm adding a touch of green there just between the petals because there's little leaves just peeking out. I've got two shades there. One's quite a, a lighter green, that's the one I'm using first, and then I will overlay with, um, I think it's called an olive green, just to give depth. And this is a great way to add um, a precise line at the point of those petals so it's clearer to see where the petals begin and move away from the plant. Often if you're drawing a flower and it's got two petals next to each other it's very difficult to demarcate where one ends and the next one starts but those little green leaves um, help us to give definition to the actual structure of those petals. So this is a five petaled blossom. Um, most are but some will be three and some will be six but the almond uh, tree is actually a five petal blossom. Now I'm going back in again with my white to make sure that I've laid color over every part of the petal because I really don't want the toned paper to show through. And again, I'm building it up where I'd put white on before, just going in now to make sure that there's enough color laid on the page. Again, I'm always trying to make sure that I'm coloring from the center towards the edge of the petal so my lines are not crossing left and right up and down they are going from the center to the outside or my strokes are going the way the actual petal grows so almonds are either bitter or sweet and we eat the sweet varieties and the bitter almond is actually the natural source for the poison cyanide which was kind of interesting as well just doing some final touch-ups now I'm going to add a little bit more grey on the, on, the, on the petal that's below the one that's in front of it to give it that shade behind. So again, we, we have better definition where the two petals actually join each other. And it, it's a subtle stroke, but it actually lifts the um, petal and gives more of a 3D effect to the actual artwork, which is uh, it's kind of interesting. So let me know in the comments below if you're going to attempt an almond blossom or if you're going to do one of the blossoms that grows in your area of the world. Um, I'd love to hear about your exploits into coloured pencil work with almonds. So here we are. This is now the uh, finished article, what I have. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit there so you can see it. Um, I was quite happy with how this came out. As I say, it was my second attempt. So I'm Alison Hazel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.